Okay, Victor Momo from Excel Moments here. And this is a question someone shared with me just a day back. And I thought to do a video on this. Right, what you have here is basically a sum of visible cells, which is something that's been around forever. It's easy to sum, you know, of just visible cells. But when the formula construct gets a little complex, like a sum if or a sum ifs, and you want to then, you know, include only visible cells, it gets a little tricky. Look at this here. I have this data set and I have created down here something that looks like a sum if for females and you know for males. Okay, so it sums up the ages but respects the gender. If I then put a filter here, note the number for females, 387. If I put a filter here for maybe marketing, for example, you can see that that number changes. So it means that, you know, it's a sum if, but it respects, you know, the visible or invisible flag and it only sums up those that are visible. So how did I achieve this? I would show you in the next sheet. Okay, so when you think about summing up visible and not visible cells, there are two functions that should come to your mind. One is subtotal and one is aggregate. The aggregate was just introduced in 2010. But you could use either of them. And the only reason I made this video, because we have a lot of these type of videos on YouTube, is the fact that we've not made one since we started dynamic arrays and, you know, spills. Because they help you to see what's really going on. Before it was like a black box, but now you can really see what's going on. Okay, so basically, what I want to do here is I want to have a helper column, right? And the helper column is going to show me either 1 or 0. 1 when it's visible, 0 when it's not visible, okay? So I will use the subtotal function, for example. I use subtotal and I would use the numbers in the ranges of 100 and above, which always exclude, you know, visible cells, invisible cells rather, or filtered out cells. So once the cell is filtered out or not visible, you know, it's omitted. I will use a count A, right, because I'm trying to count how many cells, you know, are in that particular range. Okay, but look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 103, which is count, and I say count just this cell. So it's one cell, right? If this cell becomes hidden, this number should give me zero instead of one. But how do you get to see the value in a hidden cell? Simple. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do two things. Let's put a row number here and let's put, you know, this hidden flag here. So basically for the hidden flag, I'm just replicating this. I just want to have a range so that when I filter at the top, you know, I can still see the answers here. All right. For the row, I just want to know, you know, what row is that so that I can correlate what I'm seeing. Uh -huh. Okay. So basically that's it. So let's put a filter now and see what happens. When you put a filter maybe on marketing, I don't know why I'm putting. This row, this row is visible. Row 3, row 5, row 6, row 8. Look at them here. 3, row 5, row 6, row 8. You can see that all of them are 1s. And all the ones that are not visible are zeros. So once you have this flag, we've always done this, but we never could really see what was going on. You know, but once you have this flag, you pretty much have, you know, what makes your construct, you know, work. Okay? So that's basically it. So what happens is this. Let me try and recreate you know, this formula and introduce my flag into it. So I could use, instead of a sum if or a sum if, I could use a sum. What I want to do is I want to sum up the ages. That's correct, right? Okay. Where the gender, huh? so the gender, let's say it's equals to F here. All right. So that's basically it. But what I'm going to do is I'm then going to include this, you know, my helper column so that whenever it's filtered out and it gives a zero. You know, that row is not used in the calculation. Okay, so that's basically it. I do this and I close and I close. Right, so now the answer is same. Let's put a filter here on marketing. So we expect that number to change. As you can see, it respects it and it gives 137. So that flag in that column is basically what makes it work. Okay, but you know that I'm not exactly a fan of helper functions and helper columns, rather. Not like I hate helper columns, but I, you know, pretty much like to do things in one place. But helper columns are very, very helpful. So what I'm going to try to do is can I do this all in one formula rather than having a helper, you know, column here? So, previously, we would have done this with the offset function. You know, the offset and the subtotal will help us generate a dynamic ring that looks like this, which will still work. But since a lot of people have reservations on the offset, 
I'm probably just going to use a different construct. If you look at these expressions well, you see that it's basically one function. It's just a subtotal. It's repeated, you know, all the way. So it's one function, subtotal, and you're just kind of iterating it over all the rows. So what do I do in such a case? I could use the map function then. So I could say map, you know, and I select, you know, the range. And basically, I'm doing only one thing. So X here will represent each of those elements. And I'm doing only one thing. Basically, I'm just doing a subtotal 103 of X. Meaning that for each of those cells, you know, do a count A, you know, of the cell. If it's visible, it's 1. If it's not visible, it's 0. So this will give me an array type construct, you know, where it spills. Okay, good. So with this, if I use this expression instead, I wouldn't need, you know, the helper columns as it were. All right, so let's go back into this expression, right? And instead of doing this H3 to H22, that's basically just putting that map in there. That's what it is, because that's the representation of, you know, the um, helper column that you had, right? And you now have this. So let's filter and say we want to filter marketing, right? You see that we have that. We could have put... Um, Sorry, my shortcut didn't work there. <laughs> we could have put a filter on the name too and maybe say you want to see the names that start with K, for example, something like that. And you can see that that gives you 1, 2, 2, which is 32 plus um, 36, that's 68, plus 54, 122. So that's how you get it done, you know, with dynamic arrays. So even if the formula looks a little complex and it can get a little complex, you know, you can always use that expression, you know, to be able to distinguish or differentiate between, you know, visible cells and not visible cells and you get your formula to work. So I hope you enjoyed this, you know, how to, you know, do more like a sum ifs or some complex formula construct, but only including visible cells in your calculation if you like this video hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out